Uh, good evening. Uh, I I can't speak directly in English, so first of all, I apologize for talking while I'm looking at the manuscript. Uh, it can be tiring to listen. You know, you can go restroom anytime, or you can sleep if you <laughs> see. But uh, just you don't talk in sleep, in your sleep, okay? Uh, my name is Kosai Ikeda. Uh, I serve Kenryuji Temple in Shonai Town in Yamagata Prefecture in the northeastern region of Japan. It is a pleasure to meet you. On behalf of the head priest of the Soto Zen Buddhist School in Japan, I'm here as a teacher to convey his messages and teachings. Last year, I shared the Dharma talk on Zoom, but I'm finally here to share a Dharma talk in person. Regardless of our situations, the Buddha way manifests within our everyday life that we embody wholeheartedly. So let's begin with the birth chant, uh, you have the papers. You know, um, we're going to chant us, chant the verses and uh, sit in Zazen a little bit. And uh, we're going to read a message from Kancho. It takes 15 minutes. And we're going to have a Dharma talk for 30 minutes. It's going to be very long time. Be prepared. Mm. So uh, please have a look at the handouts. I want you to look at the, uh, a piece. It's a, a piece of paper only, not something uh, that is stapled together. Okay. Mm. Yes. Single piece. Single piece. So you had Sangemon. Repentance verse and the San Kiemon, three refuges, prayers, and in Ichibutsu Ryoso verses in worship of the three venerable ones on the page. I will chant the first line of the repentance verse like Kashaku Shozo Shoaku Go. Please repeat after me once I strike Kai Shak Kulpers like this. Again, after I chant Kai Yumashi Tonjin Chi, please repeat after me with the Kai Shak. We continue to chant the verses all the way uh, to the last line Nam Tai So Jo Sai Dai Shi Kezan Zen Shi. Okay? Please align your uh, posture, breath, and the mind, and the repeat after me slowly, taking your time. Kashaku shozo shoaku go. Kashaku shozo shoaku go. Kaiyu mushi tonjin chi. かゆむしとんじんちちゅうしんくいししょしょちゅうしんくいししょしょいっさいがこんかいさんえいっさいがこんかいさんえなむきえぶつ Namu kie busu, namu kie ho, namu kie ho, namu kie so, namu kie so, namu shakamu ni busu, namu shakamu ni busu. Namu 
南無高素常用大師道元禅寺、南無大素常最大師慶山禅寺、南無大素常最大師慶山禅寺。Thank you very much. I recommend that you chant the verses regularly throughout the day.、Uh, today I shared the verses in Japanese, but you can certainly、uh, the English translations. There is no doubt that the habit will become a pillar of the mind. Now do the zazen. Do zazen. Please form your hands in cosmic mudra or hokai join by placing your left hand on your right hand, palms facing up. Then your thumbs slightly touch and support each other. Please straighten your back and breathe calmly. Let's sit. Down just a short time. Thank you. Please relax your body.、Uh, just like the verses,、uh, I hope you can incorporate the practice of zazen into your everyday life. Your own karma forms your own self. Although we get swayed by our own ego, when we cum cumulatively practice the Buddha's karma, With constancy through our body, speech, and mind, we will certainly find a refuge as a Buddha's disciple within ourselves. Please keep this in mind and walk on your path.、Uh, here I have the official message from the Kancho, the head priest of Soto Zen School in Japan. I invite you. To listen to his message in silence in the posture and the mindset of that. And you have the paper, papers,、uh, the message from the Kancho. This one. He is the head priest of Sotoshu、uh, this year. Okay. A message from the head priest of Soto Shu. We are now faced with many difficulties and uncertainties, and our way of life is being questioned. The global spread of the novel coronavirus has resulted in the loss of many precious lives, and people are in deep. Turmoil, international conflicts, and civil wars, social problems such as, such as poverty, discrimination, inequality, bullying, and incidents that take lives 
as well as natural disasters and global environmental changes that have been occurring frequently in recent years have brought about a crisis of survival for us all. What kind of a way of life should we who live by the teachings of the one Buddha and the two founders strive for? The Buddha taught us to live with wisdom and compassion. Wisdom is the ability to realize the truth of life, which is animated by all things. Compassion is the ability to eliminate suffering and lead people to peace of the mind with a herd of infinite empathy, with wisdom and compassion. We can be tolerant and accept each other's different standpoints. Keizan Zenji taught us to accept the sorrows and the sufferings of others as if they were our own and to live in harmony with one another. This year, let us continue to deepen our human relationships by sharing, supporting, and caring for one another with cooperation, one of the bodhisattvas for embracing actions. Dongen Zenji stated, although this dharma is abundantly present in each person, it isn't manifested without practice practice. In this way, he admonished us to carefully apply his teachings to our daily lives. Let us all join hands with the Buddha and proceed with the practice of the Bodhisattva by being familiar with Zazen and praying together to live peacefully so that no one in the world is left behind. Finally, in the coming year, memorial ceremony for the 700th anniversary of Daihonzan Sojiji's founder, Taiso Keizan Jokin Zenji, will be celebrated. I hope that you will appreciate this precious opportunity to experience this Dharma connection and that you will deepen your faith together with us. Nam Shaka Muni Buddha, Nam the Great Ancestor Joyo Daishi Dongen Zenji, Nam the Eminent Ancestor Josai Daishi Keizan Zenji, Gasho. April 1st, 2023, Reverend Shuko Ishizuki, head priest of the Sotoshi. Thank you. Uh, in the face of many challenges and causes of our anxieties, questions about our way of life is being posed on us all not just serving our own benefit. We must learn to live together with others as if their concerns are your own. This is the practice of doji, cooperation or identical action of the bodhisattvas. Uh, there is a parable, parable, uh, once, People decided to host a festival in a village. As you know, sake is an essential item for enshrining deities. Sake, you know, uh, alcohol, right? But the village was very poor financially. So one person made a suggestion. I have a good idea. We can each bring several ounces, ounces of sake then we can pour it into a big bottle and share it with everyone. Everyone thought that was a good idea. When the day of the festival came closer, one young man in the village 
had a thought. I feel like it's a bit wasteful to share the sake with everyone. Wait a minute. Since everyone else is bringing sake, no one would notice it even if I alone brought water. That's brilliant. I will bring water instead. Then all the villagers came together and poured their sake into a big barrel one by one. After offering a ritual to the deity with the sake, they opened the barrel and they had a toast. Then they realized they were just drinking water <laughs> instead of sake. Do you get it? Mm. Everyone brought water because every one of them thought no one else would notice it, even if he or she alone would bring water. In reality, there might not be such a case, but I think there are various, various issues and problems. This kind of selfish thought conceived by each individual is causing. We think it cannot affect the environment, even if I alone forgot, forget to turn off the light and waste the electricity a tiny bit. Though I bought too much food and wasted it, it just happens sometimes. My bad manners, bad manners shouldn't be a problem if no one is watching it, etc. If everyone in the world acts this way, the environment and the system of the earth would immediately perish. The thought that I alone need to benefit is precisely the path to destruction. If you think about it this way, then you know that the world would immediately shift its direction in a favorable way when each of us makes a tiny bit of effort to take the right actions. I believe we are in this pivotal moment to take even half a step forward with what, can, what, what we can do and continue to carry them out. So what can we do now? I want to say that we have Zazen. Uh, there was a documentary program on TV in Japan the other day, featuring a small island with a population of about 500 in Italy. There is a nunnery and many sisters live there. It is really a quiet island. And I hear it is called the Island of Silence. There is a sign on the path leading toward the nunnery, which says, silence is love. One sister said, when you let yourself be in the world of silence, you will hear the voice of the world. You will hear the groaning. By letting ourselves be in silence, we can be intimate with the voice of the world. That is to say, we can be intimate with the voice of each and everyone. Silence is love. It is the teachings from the Christianity, but I heard it is also Zen. Zen is the practice of the Bodhisattva. In the book called the Ho Kyoki, you know that? Ho Kyoki. No? in which Dogen recorded his own teacher's teachings. There is a line that says, in Zazen, we do not forget sentient beings. We do not abandon sentient beings. Furthermore, we always extend our compassion to even insects and vow to deliver them and circulate and extend all merit, merit to all beings. 
It teaches us to sit straight with a compassion mind that reaches all beings, including insects. Insects. Keizan Zenji's book called Zazen Yojinki. No? You don't know that. That teaches us what to be aware of in Zazen says. Remain always in great compassion and direct dedicate the boundless merit of Zazen to all living beings. Maintain the vow to end afflictions, the vow to realize awakening and just sit, do nothing at all. This is the way to study Zen. Zazen of great compassion generates merit that is extended to all living beings. And to live our life in truth, ending the delusions means to sit single-mindedly without aiming for anything. That is the essence of Zazen. The practice of the Bodhisattva we do with our vow to deliver all beings before delivering ourselves is to do what we do wholeheartedly without aiming for any purpose. We must keep in mind that it is the extremely important point of Zazen practice. Shobo Genzo, you know Shobo Genzo, Shobo Genzo says, when we cast away our body and mind into the house of the Buddha, and the practice is carried out by the Buddha. And when we follow the practice of the Buddha, we become the Buddha, leaving behind life and death without exerting effort or spending our mind. That is the practice of the Bodhisattva we call Shikantaza. But it is not only Zazen, but living daily life. And placing our hands together <laughs> and the bowing is <coughs> of the Bodhisattva. This prostration is an extremely important practice. I want to convey the importance of this worship. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we put our hands together and prostrate, completely lowering our head. Completely lowering our head. A chunk of ego that is quite hard to lower down. No, 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 you, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Once is never enough for me, filled with the ego. So we prostrate twice and three times. Then it is still not enough. So we prostrate today, tomorrow, and the day after, and so on. We prostrate this year, next year, this decade, and the next decade. If the prostration of this life are not enough, we prostrate in the next life and the life after. You have to be humble, thoroughly. We step back once, twice, and then step back the third time to prostrate, lowering our head to the lowest over and over. This is a manner of practice that we throw away the uh, uh, right leg, left leg, right hand, left hand, and the head, right? She did it but, uh, like this. Ah. Ah. Uh -uh. Put your hands together, then right leg, left leg, right hand, left hand, and 
we call this gotai tochi. Gotai. Gotai means uh, uh, five parts of my body, five parts. One, two, three, four, five. And tochi means throwing away to the ground. Uh, this is also commonly seen in other religions. By prostrating over and over, we approach the sacred place. I wonder if you have seen the scene where the doshi, the officiant, prostrates during the ceremonies of Soto Zen Buddhism, where he or she prostrates and elevates the palms above the level of your ears like this. Putting our hands together and prostrate, lowering our hands, lower, 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 enough, not enough, lower, more, more, lower, like this. And firmly touch the ground with the head. But it is not enough. Finally, you put your hand into the ground, into the ground. So, elevating the palms above the level of your ears just indicates that. Then you can receive and hold the feet of the Buddha above our head. This is called Bussoku Chorai. Bussok means the feet of Buddha. And Chorai means receiving and holding. We humbly receive and hold the feet of the Buddha. How filthy and humiliating it is to place a person's foot on your precious head. We feel sorry for having to place the feet on the head given by my father and the mother. Such thoughts might come to our minds, but we completely throw away such attachment and prostrate, casting away the body and the mind. When we can do this, the Buddha's feet can finally be placed on our heads. We have an expression that goes like this. What is noble is not the head or hands, but instead it is the feet. Become the person like the back of the foot, which quietly fulfills its role without ever being noticed always facing the filthy and dirty place through its entire life. We must fulfill the task of this given life diligently, wholeheartedly, and quietly, even if no one ever noticed it. The might, there might be days winds blow intensely, against us or storms hit. There might be days too painful, painful to endure and keep going. Still, we do what must be done and cease to do what must not be done. We live our life wholeheartedly with dedication. Among the renounced Japanese poets, there is a poet called Kenji Miyazawa. I'd like to introduce his poem on this occasion. You have a poet on the paper. This poem is by far the most beloved work of his called Ame Nimo Makes, Ame Nimo Makes, Unbeaten by Rain. I would read the poem in both Japanese and English. Okay. I'm beaten by rain. I'm beaten by wind. I'm bold by the snow and the summer heat. Strong in body, free from greed, 
without any anger, always serene, with a handful of brown rice a day, miso and a small amount of vegetables suffice. Whatever happens, consider yourself last. Always put others first. Understand from your observation and ex experience. Never lose sight of these things in the shadows of the pine groves in the field. Live modestly under a thatched roof. In the East, if there is a sick child, go there and take care of him. In the West, if there is an exhausted mother, go there and relieve her of her burden. In the South, if there is a man near death, go there and comfort him. Tell him, don't be afraid. In the North, if there is an argument and a legal dispute, go there and persuade them. It's not worth it. In a drought, shed tears. In a cold summer, carry on. Even with a sense of loss, being a cold fool, being neither praised nor burden, such a person I want to be. I will try to read it Japanese as well.雨にも負けず、風にも負けず、雪にもなつのは差にも負けぬ。丈夫な体を持ち欲はなく決して怒らず、いつも静かに笑っている。一日に玄米四合と味噌と少しの野菜を食べ、あらゆることを自分を感情
So there are still hundreds of sheets of the papers of the unbeaten by rain he wrote. The unbeaten area, once densely covered in grass, became beaten enough for us to see a narrow path because he was wandering every day. The members and the neighbors of the temple all knew what was happening, happening to him. Nonetheless, they watched over my teacher warmly, always talking to him. I'm really grateful to them. After my teacher passed away, I had a chance to talk to a priest from the neighboring temple. When my teacher was wandering around as he always would, a priest from another temple came to our temple on an errand and found him. He greeted him saying, Reverend, it's a nice day today. Are you heading somewhere? Then my teacher replied, what are you talking about? We will reach the AH temple if we walk along the path. AH temple is waiting for us at the end of this path. That's what your teacher said to me, said the priest. I was shocked to hear his words. Indeed, it might have come out of his mouth due to the disease, but I was moved to hear his words coming out of his mouth, even in such condition with the disease. He then said, that's how the ones who walk on the Buddha way must be. That's how I felt to hear your teacher's words. Kosai-san, Kosai, my name, Kosai-san, please don't ever forget how your teacher lived his life. That was the story this priest shared with me. The path he walked every day was not merely a path to wander around. The path was leading him to AH Temple. All of us have our own paths that we have walked through and paths to go on. Can you see the path and where it is leading you? It doesn't matter where it leads you. It doesn't matter who this I is. Simply just continue to walk on the path that is unfolding right in front of your eyes earnestly. We walk earnestly and sincerely one step at a, at a time. I believe this was the teaching that a life of a Zen monk who lived earnestly told me. Even if not everything goes according to our wishes or we are in the abyss of sorrow or in the midst of confusion or chaos or facing the inevitable illness or even if the names of our own children faded into oblivion or we are at the peak of happiness we just walk continue to walk on this path most earnestly and sincerely this is the buddha way in every moment and in every place the buddha way extends and unfolds for us to walk rest assured this is the path we walk together that's it. Although it was a long message, I hope you could understand the essence of my message. Apart from the contents of my message, I was actually quite 
anxious if you could understand my poor English. I'd like to extend my deep gratitude to senseis, teachers, and members of this temple. It's my hope that you will find it helpful to walk on the Buddha way. Thank you very much.